guys, welcome back. It is Friday and you know what that means. It is time for another installment of my Friday Faves, Fails, and Finds. This is my series where I get to hang out with you guys for an entire video, chit chat about some fun stuff that I have been interacting with in my life and some of the things that I think are worth sharing. So I've got a ton of stuff sitting here ready to share with you guys. So let's go ahead and jump in. So the first thing here is really exciting, you guys. I mentioned this, I think, briefly in another video pretty recently, but you guys know that I have have loved the Dirty Lemon beverages before. If you're unfamiliar with Dirty Lemon and you haven't watched my video in the past, they are a detox beverage company. And they all have the basic ingredients of Himalayan salt, lemon, and cayenne, but then they all have an add-in, at least up until this new one, where it will be a ginseng or a charcoal or a collagen or something like that. This new one, you guys, I feel like it was made specifically for me. It wasn't, but I feel like it is because it is Dirty Lemon plus CBD. Now they hit a little bit of a hiccup in the distribution of this because CBD, I feel like is a very misunderstood situation. A lot of people hear CBD and they think this person is trying to sell marijuana across state lines. To clarify guys, CBD, which you know I'm a big fan of and I am not a big fan of marijuana, CBD is made from the hemp flower. It comes from cannabis the same way that hemp does and so that word tends to get thrown around as sort of a pejorative, right? You know, they're just like, oh is this like getting high? There is no high to CBD oil, there is no high to this drink. It is an amazing, however, anti-inflammatory. I take CBD oil twice a day, every day from a company called Rossum. So I was very excited to find out about this. What's this drink like? It is actually really different from their other drinks. Usually you just end up with that same kind of flavor profile of the cayenne, the salt, and the lemon. They're very good for anti-inflammatory. They're very good for alkalizing. Those ingredients are still in here, but this also has an interesting little cocktail of pineapple, blood orange, and tangerine. They're calling that their pineapple express blend. It makes this taste really delicious. It's very kind of naturally, subtly sweet, has a little bit of like a tropical vibe to it. And then you also get full spectrum PCR hemp oil, which is going to be that active ingredient. It helps me a lot in the sense of just quieting my brain down and clearing my thoughts. Really just the word that comes to mind is clarity. It just gives me a lot of clarity. So I was really excited to try it. I'm very happy to say it tastes great. And I mean, obviously I'm not a doctor. There are no claims on this that this is going to have any kind of medical benefits, but anecdotal Totally, CBD oil has done a fantastic job of helping me just kind of like get control of that busy brain and this is a really really beautiful way to put it into your routine. Okay guys, next fave is this. They are releasing the fall fragrances earlier and earlier at Bath & Body Works. I feel like we're gonna start having the fall fragrances in like April pretty soon. They're gonna be like, yeah, screw it. You can be pumpkin marshmallow latte all year round if you want. I didn't know that they were coming out this soon. And so they're already out, but I needed some lotion and I love their Ultra Shea formula. I really do. I went in there and I was kind of picking up some of my old favorites because they didn't have anything seasonal that I knew of. And one of the girls there, those people are so nice. One of the girls there was like, ooh, if you like that, then you should try the new Boardwalk Marshmallow Clouds. You guys, I am, and I will always say this, I am a 13 year old when I get in Bath and Body Works. I just want everything to smell like cupcakes, okay? Like, I just become a child again. You are never too old to appreciate a Bath & Body Works fragrance if that's your truth. So this is my truth. And I just love vanilla. Vanilla's my jam. It's pretty much always been my jam. It's always been kind of the note that I really, really like in any fragrance. And so this, if you didn't know, marshmallows are actually vanilla flavored if you've ever made them. This is a very rich, delicious, vanilla fragrance. It actually reminds me a lot of Vanilla Lace from Victoria's Secret, which I don't think is a coincidence. Aren't they the same company? I'm not really sure. Yeah, it's not cloying, which I really like. It doesn't have that whatever ingredient that they put in like their bourbon caramel candle that just is like Mm. It's like a fake sweet that just comes back around and bites you in the wrong way. This doesn't have that. It's just creamy, it's sweet, it's vanilla-y, and I love kind of catching it on my skin over the course of the day. I will use it on my legs and then I will just kind of rub the excess off on my like arms and shoulders and I'll just kind of put my hand up to my face like later on in the day and I'll be like, oh, Oh, that's so nice. Like, it's just a really pleasant fragrance. And so I just thought this was worth mentioning because you go in there and you can get pretty inundated by all the things going on and just smelling everything in the world. But if you are a vanilla girl, this is a pretty cheap thrill and it's really, really nice. It's a very, I feel like, 
as Bath & Body Works things go, a very mature vanilla fragrance. All right, guys, the cat's out of the bag. This has got to be one of my favorite things, not just this week, but in a really long time. This is the Buildable Blur CC Cream from Thrive Cosmetics. I have been hearing rumblings of a makeup product, an actual skin pigment product, coming out for so long. This has been in development for like three years. The company's only been around four years. So, I mean, this has been in the plan for a long time. But if there's anything that I learned by spending two days straight with Carissa, it was that she doesn't spare any detail. So this is a beautiful formula. It is SPF 35. It does actually blur and build, which is really, really nice. I'm not wearing it right now because I'm doing a foundation wear test for another video to come out next week so you guys will see that if you guys want to check it out i did do a video on wednesday when it came out and then also i put a before and after on my instagram so you guys can check that out as well but i really really like this formula i think that they did a fantastic job with it they also released it with a little beauty sponge for application which i think is really nice and i of course as a magical moment i guess i would call it like to borrow a phrase from leanne my magical moment this month was going and spending two days with amazing, amazing women on behalf of Thrive Cosmetics. So thank you to Thrive for being an amazing frigging partner in my life and for sending me on that trip because it really was like the highlight of my year so far. All right, another uh, find slash fave here. Guys, I've been really into the apricot color thing on my face recently. I actually posted yesterday, we went to do our tasting for our rehearsal dinner yesterday. They served me a couple of glasses of Brut Rosé and I realized that my Brut Rosé matched my eyeshadow. I was like, this is definitely my inspiration for my aesthetic right now. Like my late summer aesthetic is just rosé all day all over my face. I found that this lipstick that I was too afraid to try when they sent it to me, if you guys recall, I did that video where we tried a bunch of new stuff from Luscious Cosmetics and I swatched this shade, but I didn't put it on my mouth. Guys, look, I am obsessed, especially with the rosé all day on my eyes. This is the Luscious Cosmetics Satin Lipstick in Rebel. That looks terrifying, doesn't it? But I kind of did the math on it and I kind of picked it up on a fluke too. I had a nude lip on that was very neutral to cool and it just didn't go because I'm used to wearing this blush. This is the Milani Baked, Br Baked Brush in Luminoso and you can see it's very peach. Can you open? That would be nice. And as you can see, she's very peach. So that's what I have on my cheeks right now and it leans orange and then I've got a lot of orange look on my eyes right now. This palette will also be in Monday's video, so stay tuned for that. And then I just picked this up. I was like, you know what? This kind of goes. Like it's just this true coral, like a true orangey peachy coral. And as soon as I put it on, I was like, yes. Yes, Luscious Cosmetics. And also this formula is gorgeous. It went on so easily. Like I was really pleased with how easily that went on. Like I didn't use a liner. I am not a lipstick expert. You guys know that. And I'm wearing white. It could have gone everywhere. Bad things could have happened, but they didn't. And I'm really, really pleased with this. So again, this is in the shade Rebel and I am soups digging it. All right, let's talk about some books. We talked about this in my last favorites. This is My Year of Rest and Relaxation by Otessa Mashfe, and I finished it. I really loved it. I have passed it along to my fiance, Mike, because he actually has read so much about her recently in a lot of different publications, the author. And he was like, wait, you have that book? And I was like, yeah, he's like, I want to read it after you. Super quick read, incredibly strange, dark, amazing, funny. Can you believe? Introspective. It really dives into a lot of things that we don't want to talk about. And it dives into them in like an extreme way without being ham fisted or heavy handed. Like it has this delicate kind of scalpel approach to almost satire. Like it kind of comes around on itself a little bit, but she sticks the landing so hard that I had to mention it again now that I finished it. Like I was shocked at how well she stuck the landing. This had the potential to be one of those books, right? That you get done reading and you're like, this was a masterpiece. And then it just ends on some like really stupid phoned in note where they're like, and then it was all a dream. And you're just like, oh, why did I waste my time? Like, no, it's so elegant at the end. You're like, how did she 
do that. Like, I don't know. I can't wait to read more of her books. I really want to read Eileen. That's the one that I've heard that I have to read, but she has several out. She also writes for The Guardian. She writes, I don't know. She's, a, she's also a journalist. So if you guys are looking for a really good summer read that's going to make you feel both enlightened and empowered, but also maybe darkness is a little bit of all of our truth, you know? So I have moved on. <laughs> to a self-help book. I'm a big self-help book person, but this one is a self-help career book, which is great. So I haven't done anything in this vein for my career so far. I've read things like, you know, Daring Greatly or The Untethered Soul or a lot of those that are very much for, you know, your personal life. But this is called Designing Your Life, How to Build a Well-Lived Joyful Life by Bill Burnett and Dave Evans. And it really is 80% about your career. I really appreciate this. I'm only a little bit of the way into it, but essentially these two guys both went to Stanford and they are teachers, professors of this class essentially at Stanford that is about using design theory to cultivate the things that you want in your life. Not from like necessarily a manifestation standpoint, although they do talk about how like you can get good at being lucky, which I think is a really smart way to put that. But it's also just about using some of the fundamentals that designers, like product designers use to solve problems in order to analyze what in your life is actually a problem you can solve versus a problem that you need to just adapt to. And it helps really clear the clutter out of your head. Even so far, just the few things that I have kind of gained from it, like every complete thought that they have, I'm like, wow, I've never thought to put it into words like that. One of them is called bias to action. I've never heard it called that before, but bias to action basically means that you are always more inclined to do something than to do nothing. Like that that should be your default is that even if you don't know exactly what you want to do, do something. And then you'll learn whether that was what you wanted to do or what you didn't want to do, but standing still guarantees nothing's going to happen. I am a firm believer in that and I love that that is kind of one of the first principles of this book. I heard about this on some random podcast that I was listening to. That's not really important, but you know, somebody just kind of mentioned this in passing as being like a book that everybody needs to read. So I was just like, okie dokie. <laughs> I'll read it. Okay, this is a weird fail. And a couple of you have commented in the past that you watch creators who sometimes do follow up videos on their old favorites. Because essentially, we're trying something for upwards of a month, maybe. And then we will feature it in a favorites video. And then sometimes over long term use, things kind of emerge, right? In the case of this, the beaker bottle that I am so in love with still aesthetically, it's so pretty. I was really excited when I bought this. You guys, I have gone in here with a Q-tip and alcohol and tried to get this out of here. I probably need to just run it through the dishwasher. Can you see that there's mildew building up inside this cap? And that's just from using it. I didn't let it like, you know, sit and fester in the sun or something and I clean it out. But the fact that the mouthpiece is causing mildew to build up in the cap, it was so much worse than this. It was like black and it was really disgusting. And I was like, two things, one, gross like gross that that's on the mouthpiece of my water bottle and i'm really pissed and like how do i keep it from doing that because it's like all over the mouthpiece too that is disgusting like how do i keep that from happening but also is the only reason i'm aware of this because this is a clear lid like of all of my water bottles that have black lids, is this happening and I just don't know? How do I prevent this? Do you guys know? Is this a design flaw or is this user error? Please help because I really like this water bottle and that is just foul. That is just really disgusting. So yeah, that's just my mini fail of this video, but I just, I kind of want to pull the audience here. Crowdsource a solution if we can. All right, couple clothing favorites here are these shoes that I got from Madewell. They're having, I'm not sure if it's happening right now still, but they were having a massive freaking sale. These guys, I think were like under $40 and they're just kind of that classic wrap around the ankle, cute little like lace up gladiator situation that I think everybody's kind of doing right now, but Madewell did a very good job of it. They're really cute. They're really well executed. They're very comfortable and they were pretty inexpensive. So I consider that a win all around. Honestly, guys, I'm not sponsored by Madewell. I just, they have me encapsulated. Like I go on their website or get their emails and I open them and I'm like, yep, that looks like me. Case in point, I bought these jeans and the entire outfit that the model was wearing in the email because I just saw it and was like, yep, I need that. And I bought the whole outfit and then I wore the whole outfit. 
So I will stick a picture of me wearing it in next to the model wearing it if I can find it. So that's kind of how I function sometimes when it comes to clothing. I literally am just like, I need, I need that look. Badewell gets it. I feel like J. Crew doesn't really get it anymore. And they took all of the creative team and they just put them over on made well they just put all their eggs in one creative basket and so i am just really pleased these white jeans are incredible i put them in my most recent vlog that just went up they are a very different fit than i'm used to so i have a pair of white jeans that are from ann taylor or from loft and they run really low like they, they wear really low and they're really like skinny and they're a little bit cropped these are really nice and like, you know, they fit in the waist, but they're kind of loose around the thighs. They're sort of like a, a girlfriend fit. And then they've got this chewed hem that looks so freaking cute over anything that has kind of an ankle strap. They're just extremely summery. I just love a good pair of like summer jeans. I am actually now a true believer in the fact that even if you are going to wear long pants in the summer, white does not make your legs fry as much as black because I do wear black jeans and I was always like, really? Does it really make that big of a difference? I'm covering my legs. Like you would think that I'd be hot no matter what. White really makes a difference in not absolutely burning up within the first second of stepping out to the surface of the sun, which is Austin, Texas right now. So I think that those were a lot less expensive too than the normal Madewell jeans. I think they were under $100. And also I want to talk about these earrings. You guys have commented a lot recently on my channel as I've been wearing them frequently. And I also showed them in my vlog when I unboxed them. They are from my Roxbox. You can get a free month of Roxbox down below. That's not, I'm not special. You could use anybody's code to do that. But they are awesome because they're so light. I love that they're so light because I wear plugs and so they could easily pull my plugs out if they yanked too hard on my earlobe. But these are so unbelievably easy to wear. I wore them to the Thrive event. I've been wearing them pretty much every excuse that I can make. Gentle reminder, if you are going to do rocks box, don't do what I did and just kind of forget to give them feedback on the items because you'll get a couple of boxes that are just sort of like, your stylist doesn't know what to do. You know, it's not their fault. So make sure that if you're doing anything like Stitch Fix or anything like that, if you are getting these kinds of services, make sure that you go and give your stylist some feedback so that they can match you with something as freaking perfect as these. And honestly, the rest of my box was really perfect too, but these things are like part of me at this point. So a lot of you guys were asking, that is where they are from and yes, I will be keeping them. Okay guys, I think that that's everything, but I have one more thing that I kind of want to discuss with you guys. So you guys have probably gotten a little bit exhausted with how much makeup, like how many different items I have been reviewing lately. I've found that kind of exhausting too. Not necessarily in the sense of like, oh my God, I don't like doing this, but in the sense of like, I want to get more than one use out of some of these palettes on camera. So I was thinking we could start doing some more get ready with me's kind of during the week, add those in between the reviews so that we have the chance to actually, you know, see more than one look from a particular set of makeup. And I can take requests on that, especially if I do do a review and you guys are like, this is a great eye look khaki, but like, can we do a get ready with me where you use this side of the palette? Like that would be, I think a really helpful thing to do, especially because, you know, I have all these palettes lying around that I literally have used once and that's kind of frustrating and wasteful to me. So in order to do that, I kind of want to also have something that we're talking about. I don't want to just go like, and now I'm putting this on my face and now I'm doing this on my face because I am probably going to end up saying a lot of the same things if all I'm doing is just narrating how I'm putting my makeup on. So I want to kind of go the snitchery route or do some like Q and A kind of stuff. Just give me a prompt and we could just rattle about some stuff, you know, kind of start a conversation while we do kind of get ready with me and put some makeup on my face. So let me know some topics that you guys might want to talk about in some future get ready with me videos or some questions that you might have for me. Anything that you might want to know about me or how I feel about something or how you feel about something and we can all kind of open up a discussion on it. I think that that could be really fun for my channel. I just really love getting you guys opinions on things and you guys insight. You're all so freaking interesting and insightful. So I want to continue with that feeling, just kind of like help us share with one another and also get some more use out of some of these palettes. So guys, uh, let me know what you think about that. If you enjoyed this Faves, Fails and Finds, give this video a thumbs up. If you wanna keep hanging out with me on this channel and you are new, go ahead and hit the button down below and subscribe. I would love it if you guys did. Thank you so much for watching today, guys. I love you so much, and I will see you in the next one. Bye.